Dr. M. Anandakrishnan was inducted into the International Expert Human Committee Science. in Technology Sector of Brazil in 1990 and was awarded the highest civilian award of the Order of Scientific Merit. Felicitating the science and technology giant and speaking on the topic revival of traditional technologies is Professor C. N. Krishnan of the Anna University KBC Research Center. Professor Krishnan did his B.Tech from IIT Madras and M.Tech from IIT Kanpur. His area of specialization is communication and signal processing. He is currently engaged in an investigation of the societal institutional aspects of higher education research sector of our country. We humbly request Professor C. N. Krishnan to speak on revival of traditional technologies. It's my uh, pleasure and privilege to be here on this occasion. Uh, to wish Professor Ananda Krishnan happy birthday and uh, many happy returns of the day, Madam, too. Um, of course, my association with Professor Ananda Krishnan goes way back to uh, early 70s of the last century. When we get old, we talk in terms of century, I can see that. Yeah, uh, when he was a dean and a professor there, and uh, we were graduate students up to certain mischief. So we have had occasion to interact, and that has continued ever since then, and it's been one of the most uh, enjoyable, productive, educative experience in my whole life. Um, so, thank you, sir, for being around. Uh, he always been the person you go to whenever you have a problem, so that way uh, we take him for granted so much. Um, well, I'm here to talk on a topic which, uh, not that I suggested, I was asked to, can you do that? I said, sure, I can do that. Um, you must be wondering what is Professor Ananda Krishnan or C. N. Krishnan to do with traditional technologies? Because we don't teach that, we not, neither did we learn that. It's got a little bit of history that is, um, well, I come from a group which for the last 30, 40 years have been looking at uh, Indian traditions in knowledge and science and technology. And so in 1993, we organized a fairly large size conference, we call it Congress on traditional science and technologies at IIT Bombay. <coughs> and I ran a secretariat from my university uh, to do that. So we went to Professor Anand Krishna and asked him, sir, I want to run a secretariat uh, from my campus. He said, of course, you go ahead and do what you think is the right thing to do. So I did that. I captured some real estate in my office. And fairly, uh, you know, I think I did a reasonable job. That conference was very successful. Over 1,500 people uh, from all over the country came with their own ideas of what science is, what knowledge is, and so on. And then we did another one at Anna University in 95, when Professor Anand Krishna was the Vice Chancellor. And he again fully backed us in doing that, not passively backing, he wanted to understand what's going on, why are you doing this. And ever since then, uh, till three months back, when we had a conference on C.V. Shashadri uh, on knowledge dialogues, where traditional sciences were a major component. And he was the chairman of the committee to back it. So this association uh, and this topic is pretty closely interwoven. I'll just take a few minutes now. What we, mm, just in terms of title, I'm not comfortable talking about the revival. I would rather call it relevance. Uh, uh, not the revival, it's not important, but I don't understand too much about revival. I can talk about a little bit about relevance. Uh, for those who are not initiated here into what is this traditional science and technologies, let me take a few minutes. Um, the modern science and technology uh, came to our country barely mm, 200 years uh, back. In real terms, maybe it's even less than that, 150 years or so. But we did, of course, have a thriving civilization here with our own industry, agriculture, transport. Uh, we, you know, we did everything that any other civilization has done till, as I said, about 150, 200 years back without this modern science and technology. So, in a way, if you ask me what do you mean by traditional science and technology, I would say that um, whatever sustained that, that productive uh, you know, economy, industry, agriculture, art, sciences, buildings, all of that, uh, that knowledge system together has a component, of course, which deals with the material aspect of it, which you call science and technology. So, in that sense, it's a very large package of things uh, that we are talking about. And, uh, uh, we can, of course, break it down. India had its own astronomy, its own mathematics, its own architecture, its own agriculture. Every area of human enterprise, we have had a tradition on which we did very well. You know, you know, uh, in the sense, we got conquered partly because we were doing so well that people said, hey, 
we can go grab something from them. So in a way, we are not talking about something very um, abstract or very, shall I say, historical. We're talking about something very recent. Uh, and so I'm not defining what is traditional science. I'm just referring to what it amounted to. Now, as I said, I don't want to talk about revival of it. I will talk about the relevance of it. As I see that maybe there are some two or three uh, points why <coughs> this is relevant. Uh, first of all, when we say we had our own traditions in science and technology, we are sort of saying that modern science and technology is only one of the many traditions of knowing that mankind has created. That is, we, we sort of tend to assume that this is the only way to know the world. And then when we say, no, no, India had its tradition of science, then we say, oh, I see. So everybody had their own ways of knowing the world. And this one is just one of that. Why that is important to know that, uh, uh, like I think Professor Ashish Nandi, I think, said some time back, uh, science is just one of the many imperfect institutions that man has built. So in that sense, we can, if, if we understand that each civilization, big civilization like ours, had its own knowledge systems and sciences, then we are able to better place the modern system, which we are dealing with anyway. At least we should know what we can expect out of that. You know, we shouldn't be naive in thinking that all that we want is part of Indian civilization, we can get it through this, probably it's a challenge there. It gives us a better perspective, let me put it that way. And the second aspect, probably why it's relevant, which probably is more important here in this context, is that, uh, uh, well, I know it's a good thing or a bad thing, the university knowledge has not penetrated um, beyond maybe some 20% of Indian population, uh, university degrees or university knowledge. Uh, most of Indians don't have that, which of course doesn't make them dumb. They live, they live as knowledge people. Uh, you know, they run the economy, they run the family, they run everything, right? So basically, what are they sustaining on if it's not modern science and technology? I'm talking about people who deal with every day, who, those who come and cook for me, or those who clean my house, who drive my car, who sell me things. None of them have the university science, university knowledge, right? So basically, it means that in India, this traditional is not a dead thing. Most of them pull pieces from there, and mix it with modern, uh, in a, let's call it integrate. Most people use an integrated form of science, knowledge and science and technology, part of that, integrated between the traditional and the modern. Uh, so there is no way you can just use modern uh, ways of scientific approaches to understand how our people live. How do they, what do they think? What do they do? How do they live? I'm talking about not a small part. I'm talking about almost 80% of people of India. So if we know that, okay, we had a tradition we choose to have you know, such approaches, such attitudes to knowing to the world, well, then we comprehend why are, you doing, why are they doing it now, this way. So in a sense, it's, it's living in a certain way. Uh, the, the traditions of India in knowledge is living. I don't mean it's adequate. No, it's living in various integrated forms with the modern. Uh, so if you want to understand our people and their economy and their thinking, an understanding of where it came from, uh, namely our own tradition, that helps. Uh, uh, in the field of, I think we had uh, Mr. Uday Chandran here talking about education. Uh, there is extensive knowledge of uh, education uh, that prevailed in Chengalpet district uh, around um, 1750s, that is mid 1800s. Extensive data is available. So maybe today when we are re redesigning school education system, it might just help to know what kind of school education system we had earlier. Much of that may not work today, but I guess there may be things there. Uh, so that's why I thought I should talk about the mm, relevance of this here. And uh, mm, Professor Andhagishan knows this quite a bit. He doesn't talk about it much, but he understands what we are talking about. And so I guess that's why he probably suggested that we talk about it. And I should thank you for this opportunity to talk about this here. And so let me wish you again a very happy birthday. And as people said, many, many happy returns of the day. Thank you all. Thank you, sir.